Now, another important security concept to keep in mind is DHCP snooping. So here in this diagram, what we're seeing is we have a legitimate user here, let's say Bob, and he wants to send a DHCP request so his laptop can communicate over the network. Now, you got a couple of bad actors here. This guy to the left, what he's doing is he's sending thousands of DHCP requests to overrun the DHCP server. And then there's another guy at the bottom of the screen here, he's sending bogus DHCP responses. So what we can do is by using DHCP snooping, we can rate limit this port, let's say to just 10 connections per second or requests per second. And we can put a full stop to any type of bogus DHCP response. And by doing that, we'll allow Bob to send a legitimate DHCP request to the server. If we didn't have the security mechanism in place, these bad guys would inundate the server to the point that it won't be able to process legitimate requests, hence causing a denial of service attack. Now the DHCP snooping configuration. So we type in IP DHCP snooping at a global level to enable IP DHCP snooping at that level. We can also specify IP DHCP snooping VLAN. So this actually ties it to a particular VLAN. So that means we're gonna be snooping traffic on this particular VLAN for DHCP requests. We can then go into the interface, interface fast Ethernet 00. Once we're under the interface configuration mode, we can type in IP DHCP snooping trust. If we trust that port, let's say if a DHCP server is plugged into that port, this command would allow DHCP server to behave as a normal DHCP server, which means we completely trust this port. Or we could say we don't really trust this port and if it's an access port, we don't know who's gonna plug into it. So we can say IP DHCP snooping limit rate 10. That limits the total number of DHCP requests to just 10. Anything beyond that would be considered a violation of this security policy. Now one important note to keep in mind is if the port goes in error disabled state due to exceeding DHCP snooping rate limit, there are two optional commands you can configure for auto recovery. And here they are. The first command is at a global level, you can say error disabled recovery cause DHCP rate limit. And what you can do secondarily, you can define the error disabled recovery interval. So you can define after a certain amount of time that port can be recovered automatically without any manual intervention from the network operator. The next thing we wanna look at is dynamic ARP inspection. But before we get into the dynamic ARP inspection concept, what I wanna define is a couple of different type of attacks that ARP inspection protects against. And what we have is man in the middle or an ARP poisoning attack. Now this is something we have already discussed, but check this out guys. We got this bad guy here at the bottom of the screen. He's an attacker. Look what he's doing. We got this gateway up here. So what this bad guy is doing is sending a gratuitous ARP up to the gateway claiming to be 10.1.1.50. And it's saying to get to that, get to the MAC address of B. Now, the bad guy has a MAC address of B, but check out bad guy's IP address is 25. Why is it telling the gateway to connect to 50? Well, it's because it's trying to impersonate this victim. A legitimate employee in our company is now being victimized because this attacker is impersonating to be them by injecting a source of dot 50 into that packet that they had just generated the gratuitous R packet to be specific. So the gateway, their ARP table is going to get poisoned because now they're going to say in order for me to get to 10.1.1.50, 
which in this case is the employee sitting here to the right, that traffic is going to be sent to Mac B. And B is the bad guy. So little did the gateway know that it's actually sending traffic to the bad guy. And then look at this. This bad guy also generated another gratuitous ARP. But this one was sent to the victim machine saying, hey, by the way, if you need to get to 10.1.1.1, which happens to be the gateway, come to me, Mac B. So it's making, it's fooling both the gateway and the victim into believing that bad guy is the one they need to be talking to. Hence the reason it's called man in the middle attack because now that bad guy is sandwiched and is sitting in between the traffic flow. So what's gonna end up happening is that at the end of the day, when victim wants to talk to the gateway, the traffic is gonna flow through the attacker's machine up to the gateway and vice versa. So as you can see here, attacker is in the center of this flow and the attacker can now snoop this traffic and using something like Wireshark and some other sophisticated tools, completely deconstruct everything that's going on in this network, at least the communication flow between this victim and the gateway. So this is a pretty nasty attack. And to address it, we have a feature, security feature called dynamic ARP inspection. And let me explain how we can configure it. So here's how we configure dynamic ARP inspection. Initially, we go to the global configuration mode and type in IP ARP inspection VLAN 10. Now what that does is it enables ARP inspection for that particular VLAN. The next thing we do is we type in IP DHCP snooping. So ARP inspection and DHCP snooping are interrelated because not only we want to protect ourselves against a man in the middle attack, but we also don't want a denial of service attack from illegitimate DHCP requests trying to bring our DHCP server down, right? So it's a powerful combination, these two commands. Then we go to the interface. We type in interface fast, as zero, zero. Could be gigabit ethernet, but you get the idea. Once we're under the interface config mode, we type in IP ARP inspection trust. So if you trust a particular port and we know for sure that there's a legitimate device connected to it, we trust it. But if it's an access port and we don't know who's gonna be plugged into that port, then we can type in IP ARP inspection limit rate 10. This limits the total number of ARP packets to 10 per second. Important note to keep in mind, if the port goes into error disabled state due to exceeding DAI rate or the dynamic ARP inspection rate limit, here are the two optional commands for auto recovery. You type in error disable recovery cause ARP inspection. That's a global config command. And the next global config command after that is error disabled recovery interval. And then we type in a number that specifies the number of minutes after which this port will automatically be enabled. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.